Okay, hi Christian. So last time we spoke on the channel, we spoke about your uh, experiences with the flight to China with quarantine. Uh, so today we'd like to speak about two topics and especially for the first one, just what's it been like in China in terms of COVID and your experiences with that? Yeah, it's been good. Um, it doesn't really feel like COVID is necessarily a big like kind of factor here. Like obviously there's the masks, you need like green codes to get into shopping malls. Um, but in terms of maybe like the fearfulness, there, there doesn't seem to be that. And that could be maybe my na naivety. Um, but it just doesn't seem that, that big of an issue um, at the moment, that is. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it feels kind of normal, I guess. So on, on the day to day, like when you when you go to school, for example, or when you go out to the, to the shopping malls or things like that, like what what what, what do you see? So to get into the malls, you need a green code. Um, locals, I think, scan some sort of uh, QR code. Um, but there's, it's, it's busy. It's, it's not like um, it's absolutely like a ghost town. Uh, there are plenty of people out. People have masks on, some don't. Um, but it's, it's, it's like a normal kind of what it used to be like um, in terms of just people being around. Yeah. So you're saying in terms of social distancing, not too much of that? No, not, not, not really. Um, especially on the weekends, you go to a supermarket in the mall and it's rammed. There's people everywhere. Um, well, actually in the mall itself, um, it's just absolutely packed. Um, but you just get, get on with it. You just move. You, just, yeah, you get, get on with it. Yeah. And then so the QR code you mentioned, it's something on your phone. Like how did you what's that? Like how did you get that on your phone when you first arrived? Yeah, so I um I think I got told by um one of my contacts uh, who works for EF to download it because that allows me to um get into certain places. Um it's pretty straightforward. I think you just put your passport details in, your name, I think you fill in a bit of information about where you've been. Um and then it went green quite quickly. So yeah, and then so when you talk to people about it, like uh, around the school and, and people you've gotten to know, like what's your impression of their attitude about it all? It's pretty relaxed. Um, the mask thing, people wear masks pretty much all the time. Um, but that they seem pretty chilled about it. Again, I, I don't necessarily talk to them about, that, about COVID, um, but they don't seem to like kind of, move away from me or they don't seem to like if, we, if we're all talking together they don't seem to kind of like get in their space of their own it's all just kind of like well let's just crack on with the day yeah and it's sort of a little bit apart from COVID then but what what's your what have your experiences been in general sort of being a foreign person in Wuhan so a lot of people stare um not in a like a kind of who the heck are you it's just kind of like oh you're you're different you're you're you, you're a foreigner um but it's yeah, it's, it's it's not it's not bad. You just you get used to it. It may be a bit weird at the start, but yeah, you just kind of get used to it. Really, um, people have everyone who I've interacted with, like kind of like shopkeepers, um, they've been really friendly. Um, they come up and try to talk to me uh, in Chinese, um, and I don't know a lot, so I tell them that, and they kind of like chuckle. And it, it's it's all been positive so far. There hasn't been anything that I've gone, oh, not sure how I feel about that. Yeah. So that's good. Definitely. And, and what, what stands out then so far in terms of your, your life in China so far? Probably the food. Um, the food is unreal. Um, I just I can't get enough of it and I need to start getting to the gym because I know I've bought weight and I need to, need to try to try lose it. Um, but because of like how cheap it is compared to the UK, you, it's, it's, it's stupid because when I order my food, I base it on like price rather than like quantity so i'll go so i'll get a bit of that and that that's probably enough for me and then i go oh, well actually i've only spent three four pounds i might as well buy that 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 and then next thing you know when it's come there's a massive banquet of food that i really shouldn't eat but i end up eating all of it anyway so and what have been your favorite dishes so far uh ruo uh, i've probably butchered that um but that's like a noodle it's like a popular dish in Wuhan I think they normally eat it for breakfast or brunch uh, but I eat it whenever uh, and that's really really good it's got like a peanut satay sauce uh, no sorry sesame sesame sauce uh, which is lovely um, and hongshao ro which is um, pork belly 
uh, but it's kind of like the soft pork belly. It's not like fried or anything. Um, like the fat very much oozes um, and just melts, which is really, really nice. And it's in like this thick sauce. Um, and everything's good. Like, you know, even the veg, you order some veg and it's got tons of garlic with it. And it's just, it's just really good. Like if, if you're a fan of like Asian food or you're just a fan of food, I guess, you can, you, you won't go hungry and you, you it won't be hard to find a really good meal somewhere. Yeah, the thing that really stood out for me like, about Wuhan was that it's so different than the, the Chinese food you might eat back home. Have you found that? And if so, like, what's what's been the difference to you? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely different. Um, it just it, it's a lot more tastier com- compared to like the Chinese back home. But the Chinese back home is very much like Westernized food. Like you see people like buy chips and all that type of stuff, and obviously you wouldn't. <laughs> Although they are on the menu here, you probably wouldn't order it here. Um, but it, it's just like there are like, so you get like your obviously your noodles, your rices, uh, with rice, um, which you get back in the UK, which is still different here, but there's just more variety. Like you get a chow mein in England, uh, you get egg fried rice in um, England, but here you get like four or five different types of noodles, four or five different types of um rice and they use like Chinese sausage. Uh, so it's, it's just completely like, it just, it's just completely different. Okay, just to go back to COVID for the last part of this 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 recording. So um, what's it like at school with, with, with COVID pr- protocols? Yeah, so when you first turn up um, for the day, uh, you have to scan your temperature and then you write it in this uh, the book. Um, that's before you enter. Uh, you wear a mask going in. Um, at your desk, you don't have to wear a mask because I think you're obviously there all day, so it'll be quite tough to wear one, um, depending on how you feel about it. But a lot of the teachers do keep their mask on for the majority of the day. Um, if you leave the office, you should put your mask on uh, just in case you obviously pa- see parents, see children. Uh, when you go into the classroom, I tend to take my mask off just because when you're trying to like kind of explain a word, it's quite hard because they, they want to probably read what your lips are doing. Um, they can't do that if you've got a mask. So it's just kind of easier with, uh, <clears throat> so excuse me, easier with um, uh, like kind of enunciating it. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll be right back with a bit more on uh, on social life uh, in, in Wuhan. So ch- check that out in the, in the link in the description.